Relationship advice. My 27 female, husband 28 male admitted he only married me to make his sick dad, 57 male, happy. Looking back, I probably should have seen this coming. My dad and his are best friends. We've known each other our whole lives, but we only dated for six months before getting married. His dad was incredibly unwell at the time, so I should have made a connection. But I'd had a huge crush on my husband for the longest time, so I was on cloud nine when he proposed. It's been three years, and this hasn't been the marriage I thought we would have. My husband has kept me at a distance our entire marriage. He worked our entire honeymoon, but kept arranging amazing activities for me to do alone. I thought I was doing it because he was apologetic that he had to work, but now I realize he was distracting me like a small child so I wouldn't question things and realize he was making the choice to work. He doesn't include me in his life. I've never met the majority of his friends despite the fact that he used to meet up with them at least once a month, and it was his idea to keep our wedding very small. His family have a lot of friends and colleagues. They've never had a small wedding before, so everyone was shocked when he was adamant that he wanted to keep things to just family. I don't think he knows anything about me above surface level stuff, even though we've lived together for three years. I know most people who are reading this are probably thinking, just divorce him. And I would if things weren't more complicated than that. I'm six months pregnant with our first child, and his dad's health is still fragile. I don't want to hurt either of our families or cause any stress for his dad, and a divorce would devastate everyone. I wish he never told me, but ever since my pregnancy, I have been a lot more argumentative, and my hormones have been all over the place. We've been arguing. Well, I rant, and he listens a lot. A few weeks ago, in the middle of the argument, he admitted he only married me because he knew it would make his dad happy, and that his family had always been hinting that he should ask me out. I moved into a guest room, but that just made him unhappy, and he told me to move back into our room and he would stay in another room. Ever since, he seems to be trying to make more of an effort, and he claims he wants to work on things. I still love him, but I think I don't trust him anymore. I spent most of the day outside of the house and tried to avoid him as much as possible, but it's suddenly always there. I can't talk about this to my family, so I've only told my best friend who already dislikes my husband. So her first suggestion was divorce, and her second was to enjoy watching him gravel and then divorce when he thinks things are great. Right now, I would prefer to avoid a divorce. I just can't do it to either of our families with everything else going on. I need advice on if this is something we can work on and if it is worth me giving him a chance. And if not, how do I minimize the damage and hurt a divorce will cost our families? Now for the top advice. I'm pregnant and his dad's health is still fragile, so I don't want to divorce him yet, but I don't know how to get past this either. If he genuinely wants to work on it and you want to work on it, then maybe you should enlist the help of a therapist and try marriage counseling. It also sounds like you could do with getting some space from your families. It's nuts if he mainly got married to make his dad happy. You were also both adults and seemed too interested in the approval and validation of your relatives. You need to do what is right for the both of you first, and not care so much what other people think. From what you write, it sounds like you don't want to get divorced, but also you don't want to move past it. You have to pick one. And to add to this comment, you shouldn't stay in an unhappy marriage just for the sake of your families. It's your life. Leave it for you, not your family. So you both have made decisions so the families are happy. And look where that has gotten you. You're both in an unhappy marriage with a kid on the way who is going to be collateral damage. When is the last time you made a decision that makes you happy? I think you need to understand if you are happy in the marriage and if you think you want to attempt to create a deeper connection, an actual relationship, with your husband. Then you and he need to sit down and you have to ask him the same questions. Based on the answers to these questions, you'll know what direction to go in. Divorce or counseling to learn how to be in a relationship with each other. Also, for your information, generally, people aren't going to just up and die if you announce a divorce, so stop using his dad's fragile health as an excuse for making stupid decisions. Well, I agree 100% of your actual advice, I have to say, when is the last time you made a decision that makes you happy? She did say she was very happy to marry him initially. That's what's so heartbreaking. A divorce would devastate everyone. Everyone except you. It would liberate you. Do what suits you. Don't live your whole life for the benefit of people who do not appreciate you. The rest of them don't give a crap about you as an individual. So stop caring about them. 
Stop martyring yourself for a group of people who do not have your best interests at heart. This. Studies of the elderly where they are asked the biggest regrets of their lives. One of the top five answers, sometimes number one, is that they wish they had lived their life for themselves and not in a way to please others. OP, you are literally at a crossroads to live for yourself or others. Don't have that regret. Also, I really think your family and his will be okay with it when they learn the truth. Now for the next story. I feel like this is abusive, but I need feedback. I, 26 female, have been in a relationship with my boyfriend since 2012. We currently have an almost one-year-old son together. My boyfriend most definitely has anger issues that he's either not willing to confront or believes is a completely normal response to whatever he flies off the handle about. He treats the men in his life with dignity and respect. However, the women in his life, myself included, cop the brunt of his aggression and scorn. For as long as I can remember, he was always on about all I want is to be a parent, the meaning of my life is to be a dad. But since we had our son, the most he does is place with him every so often, but most of the time treats him like he's just a hassle. Our son is the happiest child, cheeky, very affectionate, etc, etc, but my partner is very hard with him. I'm not naive to the fact that the first year adjustment period after having a child is going to have difficult times, but I didn't think it'd be this difficult. I feel like a single parent 90% of the time, no exaggeration. We moved into our first home together, rental, in November, after living with his mother for the first nine months of our son's life, and things have been horrible ever since. I do as much as I can at home, but it's hard with my son always with me. My partner works and I don't. I'm thankful that he works to support us, but he uses it as a bargain card to do nothing when he's with us. I feed our son, bathe him and put him to bed, all the while my partner sits on his phone or in front of the PlayStation. If he asks for anything, he's never polite about it, and if I say no, rarely, he uses a cutesy voice to try and win me over, which doesn't work. Hearing an adult male talk like a child turns my stomach. He's a total narcissist in the way that he believes the world revolves around him. I've gone almost nine years in our relationship with very few occasions where he's thought of me and done a nice gesture for me just because he wanted to. Whereas I'm the type of person who'll see something while I'm out that I know he'd like, buy it and surprise him with it. I've covered every birthday, every Valentine's, every promotion at work, every significant event that I know normal people would typically celebrate, and honestly, I ask nothing in return. I just enjoy making people happy. The thing that's been concerning me the most as of late is how obsessed with intercourse he is. He always has been, but since I've been a full-time parent from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. most days, I'm freaking exhausted by the end of the night and have nothing left in me to even entertain fooling around. I've woken up multiple occasions where he's screwing me in my sleep. Not attempting to do me, actually doing me. When we do spend time together, I rarely receive a kiss or a cuddle. Instead, he's squeezing my boobs or trying to make out with me so it'll lead into intercourse. Why am I even writing any of this is because just a moment ago, he stormed off with our son to go to dinner at his sister's house after I said I wasn't feeling up for it. I got over a nasty bout of the stomach flu a couple of days ago and I'm still weak. If I wasn't, I would have gone to this dinner. He unplugged our television in the lounge room, threw the cable somewhere in the backyard and left the television itself on the floor. Practically, everything in our house belongs to me, save for our bed and his laptop. This isn't the first time he's attempted to control me by taking away things that I'm using. He's hidden my phone before when he hasn't wanted me to go on it. He's hidden my shoes before when he hasn't wanted me to leave the house, etc, etc. Things like that. From my understanding, this is abusive, right? Emotional or mental abuse? I'm too exhausted to remember. Anyway, I don't want my son growing up witnessing any of this or having to be in the firing line of his dad's anger. He has been before. Refer back to his age, he's not even a year old yet. I've known for a long time that this relationship isn't going to lead anywhere, but chose to have a child with him anyway because my mother was dying, and I wanted her to be able to meet her first grandchild while she still could. She died when I was four months along, but my son is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm rambling, but again, what the hell do I do? He spoke into a therapist a couple of times despite not thinking that he needed to, and things changed for a week or two, but quickly went back to how they were. I've heard talk about him being bipolar. His sister is too, clinically diagnosed, but he denies that he is. He is a former self-harmer, 
has attempted to end himself a few times and used to use the threat of self-harm as a way to not make me leave him early in our relationship. I'm just stuck on where I'm at and where to go from here. Ultimately, I know that I deserve better, but I'm thinking more about my son. We both deserve better. Please help. Now for the top advice. You are in an abusive relationship. You need to get out as soon as possible. Please do look up domestic abuse resources in your area and make yourself and your children safe. Do not warn him that you are leaving. Pack things in secret. Make a secret plan with your friend or family to get out. Grab any important documents like birth certificates, passports. As soon as you are somewhere safe, get a lawyer and link up with the resources already listed in this thread. Get out of there. You need to get you and your kid out safely ASAP. I've woken up multiple occasions where he's screwing me in my sleep. Not attempting to do me, actually doing me. This is R. R. Nothing else. There's absolutely no excuse for that. Please get help. Reach out to a friend or family member to help you get out. Contact the police and contact a women's shelter. Anyone that can help. I'm very sorry you're in this situation. Get yourself to safety and take care of yourself. It's 1am where I am now, but I plan on getting in touch with my cousin and seeing if my son and I can crash with them for a few days until I can sort this out further. Thank you for your support. Sweetheart, this man is abusing you. He's violating you and psychologically and emotionally mistreating you. He has no right to force himself upon you without consent. He has no right to control you in the way he does. Please, please get out of this relationship. Is there somewhere you can go? A friend you can trust? Think of your child. Even if your husband isn't abusing him too. Yet, the emotional control will 100% come at some point soon. Do you really want your son to grow up thinking it's okay to force himself in women? That it's okay to control her every move and make her question whether she has a right to be upset about being violated and imprisoned. Now for the last story. Girlfriend, 22 female, laughed along with her friend at me, 21 male, when her friend assaulted me. My girlfriend and I were FaceTiming while she was over at her friend's house for the night. We were saying goodnight and blowing kisses before hanging up and her friend says, you guys don't even like each other, since we were being a little awkward about it since her friend was in the room. I felt that it's not her position to make such a comment anyway, but I let it go. I said that if I'm overly affectionate, my girlfriend tends to feel suffocated and she doesn't like it, and that's what I explained to her friend to justify why I wasn't being all extra about saying goodnight. I also told her if I was allowed to be, I would love to be more affectionate. Her friend then says to me, maybe you should stop being so needy. Backstory is that I am a more clingy person because I really care about conveying affection in a relationship and then let it be known if it is not. So the actual issue, when her friend said that, she started laughing. And then my girlfriend joined her and started laughing, only presumably at me because the comment was made about me towards me, lol. I started boiling because it just felt like a betrayal in front of her friend. I immediately hung up, and my girlfriend immediately called me back twice. Each time I picked up and asked what she wanted, and hung up when she was trying to say goodnight while still giggling about it. Yeah, it was a petty move on my behalf, but I was angry about several things. One, her friend doesn't know where the line is, and was allowed to say that without a repercussion from my girlfriend. Two, my girlfriend also joins in a banter with her while I'm sitting there obviously offended. And three, when she called back and tried to say goodnight the two times I hung up, she was still giggling and didn't even realize that comments and the laughing stung. She called back a third time and I didn't hang up this time. Instead, I raised my voice a little and said, why do you keep calling me back and just laughing at me? And then she hung up on me. Her friend DM'd me on Instagram and apologized, to which I said that I forgive her and that she is okay. I told her friend that I actually appreciate how real she is and how she saves her words and gets to the point, and that I'm upset about my girlfriend joining in and laughing at me and my flaw, and not so much that she was laughing with her friend. Now I'm fuming. Sure, my attitude was petty, and sure I didn't have to raise my voice. Yet I feel that she did next to nothing to rectify the situation. Sure, she called three times, but what good is that when she doesn't apologize and still giggling each time? This is on top of a lot of other issues, so my feelings may seem excessive, but I'm just becoming fed up overall. Now I feel like my actions were the ones that were wrong here because of the fact that my girlfriend hung up on me and ignored my texts after explaining why I was pissed. I guess this is half a vent post, but I'm also curious to see you guys' reaction to this. 
Edit. We are in a long distance relationship at the moment. I am only needy with her ever since the long distance because she is really bad with communicating and texting and also interpreting my emotions via text slash phone. I notice a lot of you are indeed calling me needy and insecure, and you would be right with both labels to some extent. But it stems from her behavior more so than my own need. We have life things to deal with and choices to make, so there is pressure in figuring things out and not just being up in the air about things. Now for the top advice. It sounds like there is other stuff going on that needs to be truly sat with and felt. This seems like maybe the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. We are doing a long distance thing right now because she has a busy last semester. And it doesn't sit right with me because I like proximity. And it's been rocky because I have been complaining and naggy. But we ultimately came to a compromise and I'm respecting her wishes. This is sort of the tip of the iceberg, yeah. Well, it is the tip of the iceberg. Take some time to sit with your feelings and what is truly bothering you. It will make communication easier. I get mad very easily, but I also cool off like insanely fast. I always want to communicate, but my girlfriend finds it as nagging and annoying, so I'm always afraid to talk things out because it means risking a fight or her getting upset and ignoring me. And I don't like that because it makes both of us feel bad. Yet, I know communication is the most important thing in a relationship. She has gotten way better at hearing me out and I love her for that. And I admit it gets to be a handful dealing with my emotions, but still. I don't mind sitting with my feelings, but I don't think a talk is going to happen here without an issue. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.